pregame with Tara Lawler. It's going to be the third conference game of the season. You started off 0-2, now you get another home game against Rock Springs, another one on Friday against Jackson, so you're right back into it. Coming out of the Star Valley Invitational, where you played five games, made it to the championship, I think we saw a gradual lift in competition in each one of your games that ultimately finished with one of the best teams in the state right now in Star Valley. What are you thinking after that tournament? You know, I'm excited about what this season still has in store for us. We did know that we obviously started conference 0-2, but we kept telling our girls it's how we progress and how we develop and how we end the season, not how we begin. And so we're still looking for, uh, we need to fine tune a lot of things. Our serving needs to be more consistent, especially at key times. Our passing, uh, we rank them a 3-2-1 or 0, and we need to move the zeros to 1s, the 1s to 2s, and the 2s to perfect passes being 3s. Um, and we still have a lot of work to do. And probably most importantly, we still need to diversify our offense. And so even though we saw bits and pieces of that gradual increase from the five matches this last Saturday, we still have more work to do. And so Tuesday will be another opportunity to showcase what we're working on in practice. Uh, but we still know we have a ways to go. And, and the coaches know, the players know, and we're willing to work and hopefully achieve that goal and be where we need to be by the end of the season. How much can you work on and progress on a week-to-week basis with an approach? You know, um, by teaching kids how to use the approach, you know, I think obviously a a day like Saturday with having so much volleyball, a jam-packed from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m., 7 p.m. at night, you, you'd start to see, and we started to see, players starting to make adjustments. Maybe they'd run under the ball. Uh, maybe they didn't get wide enough on their approach. So obviously they, they say that you get better by playing volleyball by playing volleyball. With an approach, we started to see girls make those adjustments so they could hit the ball and be in better position. Uh, we need a lot of touches. We need lots of reps. Um, and so that's what we'll do um, on our off days. And when we're not practic- or having games, we'll be working on those approaches. But definitely just that continual game time on Saturday taught our girls. They could see, oh, shoot, I ran underneath the ball. Or, oh, I got I to gotta get more momentum. So they kind of self-coached themselves and would look at us on the sidelines telling us what they needed to do differently the next time. This most recent game against Star Valley, it was a two-set to none win for the Braves, but it was 27-25 and 25-22, very close through both sets. I was looking over and I saw the passing ratio at about 1-4 for the team and the hitting percentage at about 130. The passing, maybe I saw that in there. The the hitting percentage when I was watching the game, I didn't realize that the actual termination percentage was that low. Did you feel like that was a bit of an aberration or something that was facing a team like Star Valley? They were preventing you from killing it. Basically what I'm asking you is, with how you played and how tight, and then when you look at the overall stats with how underwhelming they were, did you feel fairly close to getting them and progressing from just half a week ago? Yeah, you know, I I think those are two good observations. I'd also add that we miss critical serves at key times. Uh, I think that in that first set we missed seven serves, and that's just too many points to give a team. I think Star Valley right now is ranked number one in 3A. And so they're the team to beat in 3A. You can't go and give them seven quick points on missed serves, especially when they only miss two back to us. Uh, But definitely our attack, our first kill percentage or termination uh, was not what it needed to be. They play very good defense, but we're not tipping and finding the holes on the court like we can. And so we're going to actually talk about that in practices. How do... uh, uh, utilize those those key places on the court. Location is more important sometimes than power, and so we need a place better than just try to power through the block. Finally, one other thing from the Star Valley tournament against Sugar Salem, you were coming off a game against Ridgeline where you had a huge lead. I think it was it was 19 to something small, uh, 19 13, I think, and then Ridgeline went on a 12 to one run to beat you in that set. The next game against Sugar Salem. I believe it was the second set again. It was a similar scenario where they might have scored 13 points to maybe one of yours, but then you came back to win. With this season so far, I've just been looking to see the fight in the team, especially in late points. So I'm thinking that that was probably a positive to see that, okay, once again, we gave up a huge run, but we didn't let the game get away. Absolutely, and we talked about that during that run from Sugar Salem. In the fourth match on Saturday, we had just talked about how Ridgeline had come back and that this wasn't going to happen and that we did need to have more of a fight. And they needed to, they needed to take those points personally, and they needed to own every point that they earned. They needed to outwork them. And I think that when Coach uh, Peterson and I started talking about outworking the opponent, our girls lit up because I don't think they're afraid of working hard. I think that maybe it's that 
um, bulldog mentality that we need to stress more often. But working hard is something I do think that they know how to do. And so that was a, kind of a key time out for us to talk about, make sure every point we're out working our opponent. And then we were able to close that match with a win and head to the championship game. Thank you and good luck. Thank you so much, Jake.